Wow, wow, wow. Good morning, church. Come on, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I want to welcome all of you today from wherever you are watching or a part of our service. We welcome you to Champion Center. On this weekend, uh, welcome to those of you at our Yakima location. Welcome to those of you at our DuPont, our Bellevue, online and right here in Tacoma. So glad that you are a part of our service today. We've been talking uh, the last few minutes in our services here about Easter and inviting people and bringing people on Easter. And I just want to share a little bit of what's been in my mind, my heart. I, I was thinking the other day, you know, God, let it extend beyond Easter. Like this year, let, let it not just be Easter. But I pray for people that are coming on Easter, that it might be the, the day of transition for them. From out of their other habits into coming to church habit. Now... Let me explain to you, there's a lot of people right now that got out of the habit of going to church who actually are believers, but with the pandemic and other scenarios, I, I want to urge you that you would, you would join me in praying and going out and going after people who have not got back in the habit of coming to church. I want to ask you if you would today to, to go the extra mile to make the invite, to maybe even do what might be uncomfortable for you to do in terms of asserting yourself. And who do you know would be my question that's not part of a local church. And, and so here's my advice to you, is how about when we communicate with people how about we say this? How about we say Easter is a great time to start coming to church. Easter is a great time. I think that's something we can do. We can kind of lead the thought. Rather than just, if you come Easter, I won't ask you to come back. I won't ask you to come anymore. Just come Easter. Let's not do that. Let's say Easter is a great time to start coming to church and share with people what church means to you, how it enhances your relationship with God, how it strengthens you as a believer. And let's just believe that this Easter, we're gonna see people that are going to make a new decision, not only to serve God, but to also be in the church and be part of the church, amen? We're gonna pray and we're gonna bring. All right, I'm gonna ask you if you would, before I introduce the message today, if you would just say this out loud with me. Say, my heart's open. My mind's ready. Make me better, God, by your word. I receive it, and I believe it. I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name, touch somebody around you right now. Tell them, here we go. Here we go. Today we're in our second installment of a message series called True North. True North. And I want to today just compel or encourage you, if I can, to turn your heart towards the truth. Over centuries now, sailors and explorers, pioneers, climbers, and travelers have used the North Star as a true north in the sky. Our satellite systems today, our GPS systems around the world use the true north and, and the true North Star, or the North Star, Polaris, to establish which direction is north. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, or what country that you're from, or culture you're a part of, when you turn 
and you face Polaris and you stretch your arms out to both sides, when you, when, you turn, when you turn and you face the North Star, then no matter where you are in the world, to your right is east and to your left is west. And if you turn away from the star, Polaris, you are absolutely facing south. By knowing what is north, you can then know what is east and know what is west. You can then know what is south. This is not north. This is not north. This is not facing north. Only this is toward the north. So in our series, the North Star is an icon for truth. And I want to encourage you to always start with the truth. To always turn from wherever you are towards the truth. Be devoted to the truth. This might be what your family traditions are. This might be what your preference would be. This is, might be over here what you have heard other people say is truth. And I want to encourage you today to always seek to turn. No matter how difficult you might feel, how torn you might feel, I want to just encourage every person today, every young person, every mom, every dad, to devote yourself to always, even when it costs you, turn your heart towards the truth. You see, the truth is fixed and factual. Like the North Star, the truth is not relative. Truth isn't true for one person and not for another. Truth is true for everyone. Truth is reality. It's not based on feelings. It's not based on our preferences. Whether we believe the truth or not, truth is truth the same way that north is north. And I know that many of you have heard and been taught, and even in our universities, it's been taught that truth is relative and that you can have your truth and someone else can have their truth. And I never want to take away from the validity of somebody's experience and how real that experience is in your life. But see, if two people have the are involved in a, in a same experience, they'll both tell that experience differently. They can tell it from a different perspective in their own life because that experience is always comes with a level of subjectivity. It always comes with a level of emotion and bias. And that's why it's never elevated to what we call absolute truth. Jesus championed the truth. I said Jesus championed the truth. He said in John 18, for this purpose I was born. And for this purpose, that's heavy words right there. I came into the world for this purpose, 
to bear witness to what? To the, come on, shout it out with me. To the what? To the truth. And everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Now you might think, well, Pastor Kevin, he's talking there about Christian truth. And I want to just say to you, there's no such thing as Christian or secular truth. Truth is truth. And it's true for everyone. Whether you believe it or not, true north is true for everyone. Again, culture doesn't affect it. Where you are on the planet doesn't change it. True North is fixed. True North is factual. So if something is true, it's true to everyone in every walk of life, in every family experience. Truth is always truth. Not only did Jesus champion truth, but he also said that Satan is the source of all lies. Here's what he said about that in John 8. He told some people, he said, you belong to your father, the devil. <laughs> Anybody that thinks Jesus didn't challenge groups and groups of people and mindsets um, need to think again. Like... He didn't just, he didn't just like people today say, preacher, stick to the gospel. Well, that all sounds nice and sweet, but the gospel is, is the good news of truth. And Jesus himself would challenge the ideology of his day. He would challenge mindsets and thoughts. And in this occasion, he was challenging, these were, these were Jewish people, by the way. They were, they were his own um, nationality or uh, his own ethnicity, and he's challenging them, and he's telling them, You're, you belong to your father, the devil. That's pretty strong words. And then he begins to describe Satan. He said he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He speaks, he speaks lies fluently. You know how he's lying? If his mouth is open. Like, like, he is a liar. Jesus said he is a liar and the father of lies. So if you're taking notes, write this down. Satan is the source of all lies. All lies. What you might call white lies, <laughs> all lies. He's the source. He comes disguised. He doesn't make an announcement. Satan will not come in your life with sirens and a big announcement, a big fanfare and a parade and saying, hello, I am the devil. <laughs> I came to destroy your life. He will not do that. He, he comes disguised. And people who know, who don't know this, assume something is true because it sounds rational. It feels right. They heard it from a person that they assume would know what they're talking about. And, and think about this, for a lie to be effective, it has to sound like the truth. Are you with me? Everybody here? 2 Corinthians 11 says Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So lying is Satan's native language. He's the source. Everybody say he's the source of all lies. He's the master of deception. He's the father of all 
lies, the, the internal lies, the generational lies, the family lies, the social lies, the culture lies, they all start in him. Lies are how he gets his space in your mind. L lies are how he gets his space in your family. Uh, lies are how he slips in and has a place in your marriage. It all comes with, with lies. That's how he creates space in, in our culture. He gets the lie in there, and then the lie does the rest. Lies destroy a life. Lies destroy a marriage. Lies destroy careers. Lies destroy a society, a government, a nation. Satan is the source of all Lies. Think about that. Truth is under attack today. And I want to encourage you to stay with the truth. No matter what they say, whenever there's a dilemma, whenever you're unsure, keep on pressing in to know what is truth. Turn towards the truth. Keep your life, your words, your decisions grounded in truth. Because God is a God of truth. And we have all kinds of other things around us that are being said that are not true. We're, we're living in a, an era where, where lies are everywhere. When you pick up your phone and you go to a, any kind of social media page, you're going to see lies. When you turn on the news and you watch the news, you're going to hear lies. You're going to hear descriptions of things, and you're going to hear a narrative that is not true. According to some, telling the truth is now hate speech. You're not supposed to call a man a man, or a woman a woman. You're not supposed to affirm a child who's having gender dysphoria, that they are who God created them. You're not supposed to talk that way because that's hate speech. It's not, it's not, you, know, you shouldn't do that. You should affirm their feeling. And Gender dysphoria, by the way, is very real. It's very real. It, many people go through that confusing stage in their life, but almost everyone, 98% or more of those who go through that, if someone doesn't come in and start affirming their confusion, they get back on track with who God created them to be. So to turn towards truth today, you're going to have to turn away from other people. You're going to have to turn away from other voices. You're going to have to turn away from popularity. You're going to have to turn away from what your friends are saying. You're going to have to turn away from scorn. You're going to have to be able to endure criticism. There was a young lady that was murdered recently by 
an illegal alien, the illegal alien, I should say, allegedly murdered, this young, beautiful 22-year-old nursing student named Lakin Riley. And when the president gave his speech this week, he called him an illegal, and then later he apologized for calling him what he actually is. The correct legal terminology is, in fact, illegal alien. But the pressure was that you can't say the truth. You're not supposed to talk about the truth or describe the truth with appropriate true words. And so he's going around apologizing for something he said that is actually true. You see, the only reason for suppressing the truth is if you're trying to get people to believe a lie. That's the only reason for suppress that, that, that you know in a in a, our court system, for example, we have what's called deliberation. It's where one side is presented, another side is presented, every all the voices, this side, that side, and you get to hear all the evidence. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is wisdom. In other words, hear this and hear from that wise person and then consider this otherwise person's input, and you'll arrive at a point of truth. You'll come to a place of wisdom. But if you're trying to market or peddle a lie, you, you need to shut off truth. You need to block truth. You need to suppress the voice of truth. Are you with me today? Lies are exposed in the light of truth. Lies die in the presence of truth. But how many of you know that truth can withstand all forms of deliberation and scrutiny? Come on, the truth can handle it. Those who say that they're protecting society today from misinformation are actually the ones who are promoting misinformation. In the absence of truth, lies live. In the absence of truth, lies live. Suppressing truth makes room for lies. In some cases, lies get packaged in a narrative that sounds good, but behind the name is a propaganda of lies. Let me just pause here before I lean any more into this and ask, is everyone okay? Is everyone okay? Thank you. I hope, I hope your heart is open today. Even if you struggle with me using modern day examples, I hope your heart is open today. Maybe one of these messages I'll talk about, one of the big lies that the enemy has used in that pastors are not supposed to talk about things having to do with what people call politics, which is actually life. Everyone else is supposed to have their voice, but again, truth is being suppressed. So if you're uncomfortable with a pastor who's just talking about truth, then I, I, I would just encourage you to, to reconsider that thought process because you've been buying into something that's a lie. Again, Jesus, I could go through prophets. I, that's another message. I won't get into all that and defend all of that right now. I would just say to you that, that I'm, I'm going to talk about 
some of the things that we are looking at just to help you to understand, differentiate, and continue to turn your heart towards truth in a world of lies. Okay, here we go. The word social justice is a good sounding package that is used by, hear me out, labor unions, universities, gay rights groups, even the American Nazi party, and I'm going to stop right there, a variety of people with causes that they're trying to promote will call it, they'll all call it social justice in the name of social justice. So that it opens up the doors for what they want to promote and what their agenda is. They're all insisting that they're champions of social justice. Groups like Antifa, they, they call themselves social justice warriors. All you got to do is get beyond that proclamation to what these people actually believe, what they, the propaganda they actually promote, and you'll find out how diabolic and evil it is beyond the label. The organization BLM became really big in America behind the language of social justice. But all you have to do, or you had to do before they scrubbed it, was to go to their mission statement, which said that their mission was to disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. So, we're living in a world where we have to be so wise, and we have to be so on on our toes and and what the bible calls be vigilant and be sober because the devil goes around like a lion seeking whom he may devour now he's not again you got to get this language right he's not going to come marching up to your door like a lion banging down the door and coming in and have you for lunch But the Bible describes the devil, he is like a lion who is trying to devour. How does all that happen? It happens through lies. And the writer tells us in Scripture, be sober-minded. Be vigilant. Don't be too aloof and casual about all of this stuff. Because the enemy is going about in our neighborhood, down our streets, into our cities, and in our community. And the narrative seems so attractive, and the language seems so right. And on the surface, it seems like, yeah, that's great. That, that's God. That, that's a great sound. That sounds like love to me. <laughs> but an assumption of truth is not always the truth. And many of you, even those of you who are believers in Christ, are living on an assumption of truth in your personal life that's actually based on a lie. For example, you might believe that you can't get free from an addiction. And that's your assumption of truth. It's actually based in a lie. And the enemy is trying to drag you down that road. And for some of you, he's already got you most of the way there that you are convinced, I can't, I can't change. My habits, my hang-ups, they've got me. I'm in prison. I can't be free. And I want to say to you today, that's an assumption of truth, but that's not the truth. The truth is, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. 
And we have witnesses. Come on, we have witnesses here today who used to be in the same bondage that you are in. They have been set free by the almighty power of God. And they are no longer in bondage because they found the truth. Wow, 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 wow. You might be arguing, in fact, today for your limitations. You know, things that you believe are holding you back. Things like the house you grew up in, the unfair treatment you received, the below average grades in school, the failed relationships. Somebody tries to come with you like I am right now to give you hope and then you argue that, well, that doesn't apply to me because you don't know where I came from. You don't know the house I grew up in. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how hard I've tried. You don't know how many times I've failed. And I want to say to you today, if you argue for your limitations, you will be stuck in them. But the powerful truth, the powerful truth is that God came that you might have life. Jesus himself came in flesh that you might have life and have it more abundant. The truth will set you free. Don't argue for your limitations. Be careful not to defend your limitations. Come on, do you know anybody like that? Like they want so bad to not have that addiction anymore. They want so bad to be free of that and that bondage. And I'm not just talking about drug addiction. I'm talking about food addiction. I'm talking about any kind of vice that has a hold. Pornography. There's all kinds of vices in our life. And there's a lot of people that are convinced they have an assumption of truth today. That the enemy has promoted at such a level in their life and it's got them to believe a lie. I was watching, we were at an NBA game, National Basketball Association, for those of you who may not know. <clears throat> and the Dallas, we were watching the Dallas Mavericks play. And they have a star player. He's a 25-year-old star from, he's, he's Slovenian, he's Slo, Slovenian, I believe is how you say it. And his name is Luca. And I thought that Luca played well, but I, I also felt like he didn't really have a good game. I mean, they lost the game, and I just thought, well, Luca didn't have the best night. But when we looked at his stats, he actually had a great game. Some of you may not understand these, but for those that do in, in statistical explanations, he was 50% in his shooting. He scored 39 points. And he had what's called a triple-double. My feeling was way off base with the facts. If you would have asked me and I hadn't looked at the stats, I would say, ah, oh, he was okay. And my point is there's people in this room that are doing better than you think you are. You're doing better than you think you are. You have negative feelings about yourself. The enemy is just plummeting you. He puts you in the corner in life and he just goes after you like an MMA fire, boom, 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 plummeting you with all of the things you get wrong, all of the things that you have messed up in, and then you have these negative conclusions about yourself, about your life, and here's what I'm saying to you, you're not seeing the whole truth. This is the device of the enemy. This is how, the, how Satan works in all of our lives. You might feel defeated, but you're not defeated. You might, you might feel alone, but, but you're not alone. You might have bloody nose and, you know, you, you might have busted a tooth <laughs> in the battle and the scrap. But the point is, is that you are not, you are not out of this fight. 
And I want to encourage you today, don't allow yourself to continue with that idea. The statistics are on your side. The facts are on your side. You are an overcomer. I said, you are an overcomer. You may feel like you're not enough, but with God's help, you are enough. Whatever the gap is, like between you and, and enough, he makes up for the gap. So here's my word today as I come to a close is whatever the lies are, personal, family lies, culture lies, how about we all agree today that we are going to turn from the lies wherever they come from in our lives, that we're going to be on the mission to turn towards the truth. We're going to turn away from the lie. Come on, we're going to turn away from this lie. Turn away from the family lie. And turn towards the truth today. You see, the truth of God's strength. The truth of God's readiness to help you. The truth of God's promises to heal you. They are timeless. And they are sure. And they don't just apply to some people. They apply to all people. They don't just apply to one generation. They apply to all generations. Come on. He came that you might have hope. I said he came that you might have hope. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, he came to give you hope and a future. Can we celebrate today God's goodness, God's word? Come on, church. Come on, clap your hands today. Let's rally around it today. The enemy is a liar. I said Satan is a liar. If God be for you, who can be against you? Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. Say it. Come on, say it. Sing it with us today. today the most important question and that is if your life ended today are you at peace with God do you know where you would spend eternity and if not I'd like to pray with you today I'm not here to criticize or condemn anybody but I'm here to help you find a new beginning in your life and your relationship with God I don't know everybody that I'm talking to. I don't know your name. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what you've been through, but but God knows. So I want to invite you, sir. I want to invite you, ma'am. I want to invite you, young person, whoever you are, whatever your life consists of today, to turn toward the hope of salvation. The Holy Spirit is drawing people right now. And I'm going to invite you. If you're one of those that I'm talking to, if this is your day for salvation, would you just receive the the fact that you're not here by accident or coincidence, you are here because this is the plan from the beginning of time. And as that reality sets into your heart, will you just, whoever you are, you say, Pastor Kevin, I receive it. I want a new beginning in my life. Will you just raise your hand up and raise it up high and declare 
by raising your hand. I, I received a fresh start, a new beginning in my life. Good, 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 good. God bless you. Good, good. Hands high, hands are, come on. Hands are going up right here in this room and I'm believing across all locations today. With your hand held high, just say this out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. Forgive me of all my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my life and make me a new person. I receive you now as the leader and as the Lord of my life. And I boldly declare, I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. And I welcome you today to the family of God. Come on, we celebrate you today. We celebrate your salvation. God bless you.